Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Coachman, and this is Super Bowl Sunday on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see a man back for a 16th NFL season, Eli Manning and the New York football giants as they match up with the longtime Raven Joe Flacco and his new team, the Denver Broncos. Kickoff now just moments away. It is finally time to crown a champion as I'll hand it over to the two men who will call the action, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy. I'm Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis, beyond thrilled to be bringing you the Super Bowl. All the pomp, all the circumstance, all the pageantry. It doesn't get any better than this, partner. I'm loving sharing this booth with you, sharing this moment, this type of a game. For all the teachers who said we'd never make it, we're here. <laughs> and we talk these last couple weeks about the buildup, the anticipation. I think these guys are just ready to get out there and get this thing started. And I know that both coaching staffs have spent considerable time trying to figure out how to best bring their team up to a peak without taking them over the edge and causing a lot of issues early in the game. And you don't think much of a pregame speech is needed for this one. I think the pregame speeches were the shortest all year. If they didn't just say, let's go get them, guys, they probably talk too much. The Broncos offense taking the field and the quarterback situation in Denver. Going to be something to monitor, Charles, as the weeks go by. Joe Flacco was acquired to be the guy. All right, so there shouldn't be a quarterback controversy. But in the second round of the draft, they did take Drew Locke out of Missouri, who many thought was going to be a first-round pick. So people are going to monitor it with the new head coach, Vic Fangio. How are the Broncos playing? Is Flacco up to par? If not, how quickly might they get Drew Locke in? I think it'll be longer than what people might think. What did Vic Fangio say during camp about Drew Locke? He's not a quarterback yet. In other words, pump the brakes. I'm going with the veteran. We'll figure out how Drew Locke plays later. That's good for 28 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. And a little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. The offensive starters now for the Broncos. And how about Philip Lindsay's rookie season? Began the year third on the depth chart. Finished it in the Pro Bowl. Not bad for an unrestricted free agent out of Colorado with speed to burn. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Let's go, defense. Here's Flacco off the play fake to Lindsay. He's got his tight end, Jake Bunt. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. With the first touchdown of this Super Bowl. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Brandon, this is the Super Bowl. A touchdown scored in any game is big. In this one, it's massive. Brandon McManus for the point after. And he's got it. 7 nothing Broncos. Just a four-play drive that time. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos.
after the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Eli Manning heading out and a lot on his shoulders this year. For the first time in his career, he may be looking over his shoulder at what's behind him in the rookie Daniel Jones. And you think about that first preseason game, Jones was really terrific. And I know it was a preseason game, game number one, but he was five for five on the lone drive that he had leading the Giants to a touchdown. And he started to make believers out of a lot of folks who questioned taking him with that number six pick. And there were a lot of people who questioned that pick in the New York area. You remember the newspapers after the pick. They really blasted it. Remember the fans? I think Daniel Jones went to a Yankees game and they showed him up on the big screen. He gets booed, which is kind of a rite of passage in New York. But my favorite story was he was with his family not too long after the draft. They went out to get some ice cream and the guy was scooping up the ice cream. A story came on the TV about Daniel Jones. And the guy's like, I can't believe the Giants took that guy with the number six pick. And no Daniel Jones reply to him was? Yeah, me either. That was quite a surprise. How great is that in the poise and handling things in the early going? And what a payoff. Great start for him in his first preseason game. But you know what the Giants team president said? Oh, yeah, John Mara. I know exactly what he said because he said it consistently since they took Daniel Jones. He hopes that Eli Manning has a great year and that Daniel Jones never sees the field in his rookie season. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Shotgun now for Manning. It's caught. Shepard. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. Working from the gun, Manning. And this is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. to throw again. Manning, they'll set up the screen to Barkley. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Second down pass play, got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. From the gun, it's Manning. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Credit the sack to Von Miller. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. So on fourth down, on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas. This from 54 yards away. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. Remember with Rosas, there was some speculation last year in the preseason that he might not hold on to his job with the Giants. But he certainly answered the challenge, didn't he? 32 of 33 during the regular season. 97% that is. And was named to the NFC Pro Bowl team. And by the way, at 6'3", 234, he can bench press your kicker. Now this offense ready to head back out there. 
And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice and it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. First and 10 here for Flacco. Complete out right to Jake Butt. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, Flacco finding his big receiver, Patrick, over the middle. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On first and 10, it's Lindsey. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. The kick by McManus is good. And the lead moves to 10-zip. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Time here for likely one play, then off to the locker room, and they're going to have some adjustments to make. They certainly will, and I think a lot of people are thinking to themselves, all right, take the knee, get out of here, regroup. But how will the head coach and his staff approach halftime? Will it be angry? Will it be clinical? Will they be calm? Will they just let it all out? Who knows? I'd love to be a fly on the wall for this one, though. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight as we'll get back. So the halftime show of the Super Bowl abbreviated, ready to go for the second half. show quite a spectacle but it's back to football for the second half of Super Bowl 53 this fielded a few yards into the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line the New York set to take the field they come out here with a zero on the scoreboard what was said in that locker room that's what I want to know I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting screaming people upset but typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, 
Are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Second half begins with a run from Barkley. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Saquon Barkley, 66 yards. As they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. They've done a good job of holding him down in the first half, but he explodes for a big one right there. Yeah, I've got an image in my head of him being surrounded by a bunch of people, really, with ropes and other things trying to keep him locked in. But eventually they got tired, too. And just as you noted, he broke out. And it's a guy that usually you can only keep down for so long. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Rosas on to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Flacco going to bring up the Broncos first and 10 at their own 26. Flacco from the gun. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. Sutton is part of a good young receiving core for the Broncos. They liked Sutton enough last year. They traded away Demarius Thomas, if you remember, halfway through the season. And Sutton, he responded. Rookie campaign had over 700 yards, 42 catches for the man from Brenham, Texas, which is located halfway between Houston and Austin. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Flacco on the give to Lindsey, and he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing, but with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. The last run good for two, here's second and eight. Flacco from midfield. That's caught left side by Jake Butt. And he is out of bounds, but not before. He's inside the 30. 22 yards there, a first down. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. Wide open receiver complete. 
And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Looking sideline incomplete. How about the defensive effort from both of these teams that we've seen in this game? Would you say it's like a high stakes chess match right now? Uh. Chess is one way to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like it. Okay, the only reason I say that, you feel like they're contemplating their moves before actually making one, and none of them being done very confidently. Truth be told, I've never played chess, and I know. And this is caught, and that could seal it. It's a touchdown. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but... I'm looking at your face, and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside at two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. Drive that time of six plays, and it ends with a Denver touchdown. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple no, extra yards no, up to the 27-yard no, line. So Manning and the Giants down by 10. A minute 47 on the clock. They've come so far this year, but they need two quick scores late in this Super Bowl. this out to Barkley complete call it a gain of three and it'll make it a second down and right now defensively you love that don't you I mean you'll give them that play and they'll take it every single time this is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield and too much time's gonna run off the clock hey, go. now Manning gotta hurry him to the line here Five. back to throw Manning finding his target it's Cody Latimer and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Manning looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but if they make them out of bounds, that does you no good. On, Here now is second 15, and 10, again from the 41. Here we go. Here we go. To throw is Manning. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. Third and 
third and long for the Giants and Eli following the sack. Manning to throw. And that will be incomplete. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Manning. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that may write a finish to this Super Bowl. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. So the Broncos coming out now. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. Ready. So they'll come Ready. up first and 10 now from the 33. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. The win for the Broncos, seemingly assured, they go down to a knee. The Giants gonna burn their third and final timeout as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Time for this one final knee to put a bow on this title bout. That is likely the final play of this game and no better feeling I would imagine than taking a knee to wrap up the Super Bowl. Culminates everything, the championship is theirs, and just think, the last play they had in practice before this game began was doing this practicing taking a knee and winning a Super Bowl. And they get to do just that. And the Lombardi Trophy goes west, and it goes to the Denver Broncos, your Super Bowl champs. And their remarkable season ends in the most remarkable of ways. They get to put next to their name, Super Bowl champion. And they can't ever take that away, can they? Nope. That lasts forever. So good to see the emotion when it's all said and done. You see the hugs, you see the guys sharing, the collective happiness. Makes me want to carry you around a little <laughs> bit on my shoulders to celebrate the triumph. And congratulations to them, a fantastic